So welcome back to another video and today it's a bit different. We're in Cambridge at this lovely property and we've fitted this lovely PV array. Sam Rigby's here to give me a hand today because we're going down to London, but we had a problem on the install. When we took the last panel out of the van, we noticed it had been smashed in transit, which is super rare, but it does happen. Now on the day for the climb, obviously we wanted them to get a full array. We didn't have a spare REA panel. But what we did is we went to a local solar suppliers and we bought this because it was the most, so sort of, it was the best aesthetic match for the array. It's the same output, 420 watt. But we're back here today to fit this rear panel or REA panel rather on the system. Just an interesting part about these panels, an interesting fact, as you can see here, it looks white on the array. They're actually black. And that's because we've got this clear intersection between the cells and that's what gives us our additional performance. And on the back of this panel, what you can see is the receptors on the rear. So we're gonna change this panel over now, but we've also got some interesting data. This system has been live for about five or six days. And obviously with the microinverters, you can see what every single panel is doing. We've got some interesting data to share on what this panel did compared to the rest of the array. So we'll come back to that shortly. Okay, panel's off. Took about 10 minutes. Maybe you can see there, that's our microinverter. So these two connections here, they're the DC connections. They're gonna plug into the back of our new panel. And that there is something called the Q cable. So the Q cable is the AC line. That's the end of line. So when you install end phase, what you're supposed to do on an array like this, this is a 12 panel array. Rather than going in off the end panel, what we've done is we've center fed this on panels five and six. So that's our end of line there. We've center fed with an armored four mil cable. We've gone in on five and six and what that prevents is voltage rise. So cables over a long distance, usually you get a voltage drop. When you've got a generator on one end, you get voltage rise. And if your voltage is too high, then you'll get errors, you'll get meter errors and some equipment like car chargers won't work. So if you're ever installing M phase, make sure you center feed the panels if you're doing over sort of eight panels. Under eight, you can go on the end and then terminate the other side. But anything above that, center feed them. Let's get the other panel on, get it fitted, and we'll get it all re-energized. Something else just to discuss quickly is these are our MC4 connections here. So this is the only high voltage cable on our panel. It's not even high voltage really. It's gonna be about 40 volts coming over from the panel to here. We also fit these. These are the Schletter Pro cable hooks. So that's holding our AC cable there. It's also supporting our MC4s because what you don't want is your MC4s hitting the roof because over time they might wear away, you get arcing and problems. And that's what's the major cause of fires on traditional DC systems is MC4 cable, this stuff here, rubbing or chafing, and eventually it arcs. You can't isolate it, but you don't get that when you use microinverters. Cool, and that's our panel back on. I'm absolutely sweating to death. It's so hot. This is a pretty much a south facing roof. So we should have worn sunscreen for this one. We're gonna get burned, I think, if we don't get off this roof in the next five minutes. Everything's back on and connected. What we're gonna do now is energize the system. Also, just to see, this client had the bird proofing fitted. But you can see there, that's our premium bird proof system. That protects any pigeons or sparrows getting underneath the panels and nesting. And it's specifically designed for these panel frames. So it's only available to go onto these panels that we sell. Okay, so we're now back at the office. Now, whilst that was a little bit frustrating driving all that way to change that crack panel, what it did give us is some very interesting data about the performance differences between the REA Fusion 2 panels and that temporary panel we fitted until we could get back there. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna log onto my laptop. We're gonna download all of that data and let's see how those two panels performed on the same roof, facing the same way, both using Enphase IQ7 Pluses. Okay, so this is the Enphase Enlighten Manager software. So if you are an installer of Enphase, then you'll be familiar with this screen. From a client's perspective, this is where engineers can monitor the performance of your system. We can also commission it and change any settings. 
Now, from a client's view, you'll get a very similar access in terms of you can see what each panel has produced. You can see them individually and you'll get reports on what you've produced, what you've consumed and also what you've exported to the grid. So what I've done here is I've changed the date range at the top to the time that the um, temporary panel was installed on the array. And what we can see is during that period, we produced 72.3 kilowatt hours over those three days since the system was installed. Now, in terms of the colours of the different panels, why are they all different? Well, that's because on the left-hand side here, Enphase uses sort of colours to determine the amount of power that each panel has produced. So the lighter the colour, the more power, and the darker the colour, the lower power. Now, this is where it was really interesting for us on that install, because once we looked at this data, what we saw was the bottom left-hand panel, which was the temporary panel that we fitted, in the same period performed at a lower amount of output compared to the arrest of the array. So as you can see, in that three day period, this panel did 4.76 kilowatt hours. The next lowest performing panel was the bottom right panel, which did 5.6 kilowatt hours. And the rest of them were around 6.3. Now, why this is interesting is that this was on the same array facing the same direction. And obviously, they're all using the same microinverter. The only difference was that temporary panel because we broke the panel on the day. And it just shows you the difference of the REA Fusion 2 panels compared with a standard monophage panel that's not been designed to work with microinverters. Now, what we've also got along with this test, we sort of were surprised at the data, obviously, because it was interesting to see one panel against the rest of the array. But what we've actually got at the moment is we've got another test on uh, where we've got two arrays. We've got some standard DC panels and we've got the REA Fusion 2 panels and we've got a live comparison going on there. And we see a similar result, which is around 18% uplift in performance when we use the REA Fusion 2 panels. Now, interestingly, on that test, it's around 18%. And on this test, 4.76, our next lowest performing panel was 5.66. Put that into a percentage calculator and you're at just under 19% difference between the two panels. So we thought this was a really, really interesting comparison. It's great to see that the REA Fusion 2 panels really do give that extra level of performance to a client system. And whilst this was a very unfortunate event, it gave us some very interesting data. Now, if you're in the market for a solar system and you want to get access to these REA Fusion 2 bifacial panels, then head over to heatable.co.uk. You'll be able to get a real-time online quote for a bespoke system for your property, and you'll also get access to that panel technology, which is exclusive to the Heatable brand.